narrower Hindu shrines nestle among serene Buddhist temples. Evocative carvings of gods and goddesses, tales of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas decorate devotional spaces. In this medieval capital, our ancestors designed sacred structures where a millennium later, their descendants could experience divinity and spirituality. Art and architecture of the Paranuru Pirit Kina Ibande, Hita Rasavat, Medagat Nibandia, Inibande, Macharya Parnitana, Patanga Nima, Kurnegila, who may Pratima, who is the Kanda, Isela, may Kurnegila, Padam, Lines drawing, noting under the Rupa Dara, Mima, me, 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 Hindu Balpama Kino, Akila Kino, I, the Vidin. Doida bal pe amati nawa ke baaki nawa ye hime kak naya ki ande pitu gana wak saaka chakar na ada api dana diye tamai pitu ta katya maadiye bal no gote pamana ne Bihar wale bim selas mat diye bal no gote ne sampurni sampurni dian bal pe ame ya pehe dilu pe ne ne tiye na budhuvili mam ma gatyo tiye ma dakuni India api budhuvili mam kudni uturi India budhuvili mam gatyo apay budhuvili mam ite itamat pitu the feel of Polonarua, the presence that these buildings make in Polonarua, a lot different from the feel that you get in Anuradhapura. So in Anuradhapura, I would say it's a bit rather an austere experience, you know, simplistic, you know, classic, what we call classical. But in Polonarua, it's more, there are a lot of fabulous surfaces. So it, it, its presence is very different. And that difference is a shared difference with the rest of, of South India. This may be an archaeological situation because, you know, like you don't know how the buildings in Anuradhapur, how they look when they were brand new. But when you go to Anuradhapur and then to Polonnaruwa, you feel it different. You know, as I said, it's a fabulous place. There's lots of decoration, lots of motifs, everything on the surface, like, you know, Tivanka or Tuparama, all these things. But in, in Polonnaruwa, you have all types of buildings. No? You have a palace, ponds, chapter houses, image houses, devalas, hospital, everything. One thing that you see is that, you know, it shows those buildings have shared a lot of Hindu architectural features, very obviously, very clearly, in these buildings. And it's mostly brick, either totally brick or stone and brick. And the other wonderful important thing is the, the vaulted roof, no? The roof is also of brick. We have these colossal images, the tradition of colossal images. Of course, you have Aukara and all that, but then in one little smaller area, you have the Galvihara. And you have other signs of that there must have been huge colossal images. That's a very interesting aspect in Polnarva. All these images were inside buildings. Today we don't think like that they were inside buildings. Even Galvihara was inside the building. It was not supposed to be seen like this, no? And they were all painted. So just imagine the kind of experience you have. You walk into these enclosed spaces and you find Buddha inside it. And huge, that awe oh, and this awesome experience, religious experience, is very much similar wherever you go in mean like any Hindu shrine in South India. That experience is very similar. I don't know if you had the same thing when you walked into to Aukana or, or the, or, or the Hindu, uh, Jaina image in, uh, in Shravana Belagola. And then the libraries, you know, the Polonor has a Podgul Vihara, the library, and you know, in a smaller area, relatively a smaller area than on Radhapur, you have a concentration of buildings, statues, ponds, and, and a tank, and you know, it's, it's, it, it is a world of its own on right, which is also graspable. You can walk from one end to the other in a day, no? So these are the differences, the special aspects of Polnaru in a nutshell. The building is part of the ritual. You know, it houses, embodies uh, images of worship, maybe relics, and people have their beliefs. They go to the temple to worship, and the architectural embellishments, ornamentations, and sculpture, and painting, everything is a part of this whole thing. Therefore, we have to take those things 
from a holistic, look at holi in a holistic point of view, take them in integration. But unfortunately, the art and architecture is the most visible thing and the intangible things are not visible. But I can see there are so many similarities between the worship of the, you know, the Buddhist worship and the Hindu worship. There are so many similarities. So all those things are part of this cultural exchange, the shared culture, or in other words, if you want to use a very modern term, the cultural, religious and cultural syncretism. When you ask me the salient features of Buddhist architecture as against Hindu architecture, I would say look at stupas if you want to find a strictly or more Buddhist. Other than that, we are sharing a hell of a lot, not just one. It looks like we have forgotten the presence of any difference. The idea of the difference has not played any decisive role in the head of the maker, in the architect's mind. If you get the image houses, they have, I mean, they have the plan of a very common, common plan of religious buildings of that time, which is shared by Hindu devalas or kovils. Like you have Sanctum Sanctorum, then the entrance, the tunnel area, then the, the whole area. These three basic special features is very common for to both uh, Tiwanka and uh, to Hindu temples and all that, but there are small variations. And then the mouldings. We also share a lot with Anuradhapura, Polonaru, and with South India. Polonaru, we have to say that 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 we have to May Tuna Polon Norue, Gurun Mana Silpa Gana Kataka and Lakota, Itamat Vedaga. The Boku Halatina Galloling Hadaputang Tunapi, and Alanda Gedigiva, a cock. A cock woman do labai, a cock. And then the cock, the Undra take up to money. The Mut Kadolim Boku Hal Hadapu Nirmana, he got a killer, Gedigay kill, singing. Inja kawas tetap kila kena me pali. Me me bici hari gana kamai bici ola pita peting. Bimaan aku si. Bimaan yang kian ni me raja kedera kiamu ko. E raja kedera e peta kita pain aku tiang me me bici ola tiang tiang ola tiang. E bimaan aku ti meder awat wa ti nama ewe kiamu jani elki la bimaan ola. Ebe mati dewa tar rupa tiada dia. Dan itu, mana ebe yang yang kita tahu. Itu kita ni sempurna film game dewa orang tu ni, bimana yang kita tahu, kita tim pen. Ini ni, atulat yang ni mungkin bukan bici, bukan pelal kira. Atulat tu kita se, ni Peter tu pen, ni Vishal, ni kita ni kiri. Atulat tu tak kira mana, eh ni tidak ni. Muka tu bici orang tu kira ni ada. Anit tak? Eh, di di pita tiennah dorot tuh. Di pasca tiennah uluhau, hunggak, useta, yana kah yana ni? Kau uluhau orang tiennah tara ni iri beten ni palle hat, lamba kaka karo. Kanu dekat lamba kaka karo dek dekat ni udah ni ani. Itu kotah ni api je, ibe bela nama udah. Kanu abal nama kaya ni kanu am, hat pen hari balapu ham agak kanu am. Tahu, kita bawa anda, nak apa? Hisu kosong anda, hisu kosong la, hisu kosong la, hisu kosong la. Mereka kanu, awasan itu akan bawa anda ke hamuk ada ini. Apa itu? Dakin dah ham ini, akas. Apa kas? Mula apa kas itu? Ima korak nanti apa kas? Parak tirak nanti apa kas? His, sunya, suska apa kas? Apa yang nodulu ya, cuma ini mah okasi ada dia balan ini nego tapi itu leh tak kahang tu, ini ada hasil mak ada. Hengi, ada hasil ni menghengi. Abi dah ni mana tu, abe etwi head, etwi ni hengi mak ada. Apa alp bawa, apa sansaari, apa koi cerah sani mila ada. Apa alp ini, apa shudra ini, dekina. Apa alp bawa, apa shudra tu, cuma apa itu hengi ni. 
ഈ വിലാവട്ടെ തമായി ഇങ്ങനെ ആഗമ ഭക്തിയ അപ്പിട്ട അവശ്യ ഭവനാണ് എന്നെ അത് ഭയവും ആമ സംസാരം ഇട്ട ഭയ വേദ ഇട്ട് പാശ തമായി അപ്പിട്ട് ദയ എന്നെ ഏഹ് ഇതോട് നിങ്ങൾ അപ്പിട്ട് കീ വേണ്ടി നത്തി മീ സരണം അഞ്ഞാം ബുദ്ധോ മീ സരണം കീല ഇത് മീ കലാകാരയ മീ ഗുണിമാന ശില്പിയ മീ സിയാല പാർച്ചി കരാന്നി ഇന്ന് ചതേവത്താകെ സന്താന് ഹദവത് സകാസ്കി വീട്ട് ഇത് കലാവ് പാർച്ചി കലത്തിൽ നിന്ന് ഉപ്പറിമ വിധിയത്ത് ശ്രീലങ്കയെ കലാകാരവാൻ ഓൺട വട വിസ്തൃതാണ്യത് യം യം ഗബുറു അദാസ് ഗബുറു സ്ഥിതിവിലി മഹാത്മക ദേവല്ല ദണ്ഡ പുലവാൻ വിധിയത്ത് കലാവ് ലാങ്കിക പാർച്ചി കലത്തിൽ നിന്ന് കഥമായി മാത്രം ഖ്യാൻ കൂടാ ലങ്കാവ് അനുരാധപൂർവ്വം എത്തി അത് പറഞ്ഞു തന്നെ മാത്രം കിവാഗേ അപ്പേ കലാവേ ഹറയ ആപ്തേവുണേ സർലത്തെ അല്പവ്യത്താവ് അത് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഏൻ സിംപ്ലിസിറ്റി ഏൻ ഓസ്ട്രിറ്റി ഗേ സർലത്തെ സഹ അല്പവ്യത്താവ് ഏക ഹിമവിന്നോട്ട് ഇരുപത് ഇട്ട് പാസ്റ്റ് വേണം കൂട്ടർ ഏക തവ വേണോ ഏ ഭൂഷണേട്ട് അലങ്കരണേട്ട് അപ്പി മുൾ തരാദ്യേൻ്റെ പട്ടം കാണണം ഇത് ഏക വേണ്ടി ഹിന്ദു പല പേഹ ഹിന്ദ ഇത് ജാപ്പാവുവാ കാലഘട്ടം ഇതും കൂട്ട് ഗംപോലവായ കാലഘട്ടം ഇതും കൂട്ട് മീ അപ്പ അകപ്പത്ത് നമ നമന പ്രമാണ ഞാൻ അത് ഒസോന പ്രമാണ കക്കുള ഒസോന പ്രമാണ സീമാ സാഹിത്യ ഇതിയിട്ട് ദക്കണ്ട പട്ടം കാണും ഏവ ഹിന്ദു ആ ഭാഷ ജനകര ദക്കമിന്ത്യ ഗാക്കിനോ കക്കോൾ ഗാക്കോസിനോ ത്യാന്തിയനോ നേത് അങ്ങ നമ്മളെ ത്യാന്തിയനോ അത് അപ്പേ ഇസ്രാത്തി പുണു അത് സരള സീമാ സാഹിത്യ ഏ ചലന നിമി അധിക ചലന നട്പ നട്പ കക്കുള സമയത്ത് ഉൾപ്പെട്ട മോട്ടീഫ് ഓഫ് ഡാൻസസ് ഇൻ ദീസ് ബുദ്ധിസ് ടെമ്പിൾസ് ഐ മീൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് എൻ ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിംഗ് ഓക്കെ വാട്ട് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് ശബ്ദ പൂജ നോ ദർ ആർ സോ മെനി വേസ് ദറ്റ് വി വർഷിപ്പ് പുദ്ധ വി ഓഫ് ഫ്ലവേഴ്സ് വി ഓഫ് വാട്ടർ വി ഓഫ് അവർ സെൽഫ് ഇൻ ജസ്റ്റസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ വി ഓഫ് സൗണ്ട് so that's what it is but the whole point is you know these are more in in polonaru and afterwards than in anuradhapura you know we can really see a change of attitude change of aesthetic change the way we thought about religious sites and their presentation to making them more fabulous than more austere and heavy there was the trend i uh, this is what i am um, you know this is and when you come down further down to candy it's even more fabulous sights are more fabulous ya batara thorna apita enni dakuna india ave bala pane polonu ru we matara thornak ma kiyanna bari ara galvi hari pena thornak namu passe kale di meka sampurna makana thorna vela nuvara yuge kale ena kota thinne meka sampurna vela naka makara thorne adahas me ada dakkama thiyena me makara thorna so art and religion goes hand in hand because for you to convey the idea of religion you need a system of symbols on the other hand what masri is what we call art today was not art at those time it is now it is we the art historians call them art you know they were not you know samadhi pulimya is not an artwork for them it's a religious image to worship but we call it art today from the art historian's perspective so art historians make art for anuradhapura period there is some kind of aspiration for a divine being or a divinity that is above us beyond us higher than us so i think that seems to be a commonality in sacred spaces anyway so you always climb up even on to a podium or some kind of form and and high ground is always very attractive i think for creating um, sacred uh, spaces which then become recognized as sacred sites recognition of a iconic high ground and if it doesn't exist then it's created
when building or institutionalizing something that's uh, sacred. The same form comes uh, through, um, I think, these podiums, multiple podiums. If you, if you talk of, say, the Sat Mahal Prasad, they're here. It always reminds me of the Saqqara or the Josa pyramid in Egypt, which is one of the earliest pyramids. You get the same uh, pyramids in, in South America, in, in Mexico. Uh, so you see these step pyramids. And I think that's something to do with this, you know, raising uh, um, consciousness or um, your spirit, uh, various uh, spirit levels. Uh, they talk of the seven heavens, you know, so it's something that symbolizes that um, incremental in intellect or uh, sacred or spiritual uh, climb. Um, so I think that is probably fundamental to uh, most faiths and you have then it transformed into in um, in Egypt, it was very simple. From this step uh, pyramid, it became a very smooth pyramid. In Sri Lanka, you get the Chaityas, and you get um, you know the same sort of uh, rising form that reaches up to the uh, the heavens, if you want to call it the heavens. You have the the domes of uh, Islam, of, of the Islamic uh, architecture. You have the Hindu gopurams. So there, there is that sort of uh, aspiration for something greater and higher. Oh, oh, higher is greater, something out of reach. It's very difficult to say that you only get uh, conical structures in Poland, Aram, because the, you get Vatadages in Andhradapura too. So it's thousand years before you get Vatadages in Andhradapura, which you get in the quadrangle. Of course, the best example is the quadrangle. Uh, and of course, there's a story that the people who did the Vatadages here then went to Kerala and did <laughs> conical buildings there. But the basic thing, I think that if you listen to someone like Dr. Seneca Bandana, like medieval single is art, that the buildings in Sri Lanka, the superstructure was always timber. It was never uh, done in brick and stone. The superstructure, meaning the roof structures, are always timber except the vaulted image houses in Polonaru. But again, if you look very clearly, I mean, the common factors between India and Sri Lanka at that time is that if you look at the drawings um, in the Chola temples in Tamil Nadu, they are very similar to the drawings at the Vanka image house and things like that in Polonaru. So there are again mixing of ideas. This is the time that Polonar was ruled by the Cholas. So there is always an interaction of ideas. The form of the Chaitya is really advanced. It's really advanced. There uh, has to be history that precedes Anuradhapura. But Sadly, uh, archaeologists are not interested in it, that, that history. They want our history to start with Vijay, but I think it predates that. And that form couldn't have come out of the blue. It would have evolved. Now, where did that evolve from? So I think the Chaitya is the most uh, iconic form of Buddhism. Everything else is sort of um, uh, contributory or more. It, it, the center of this is the Chaitya form, which I think if you break it down, comes back to something very uh, fundamental in uh, spiritual progress. And uh, so that's why I'm saying I don't think it came out of the blue. I think it has a history which we have not bothered to research. Size is, of course, uh, engineering feat, um, engineering skill. Um, the fact that they're so simple is actually a level of refinement, architectural refinement, and which is what I'm saying, there is evolution here. They didn't come up with this, this wasn't a starting point. This is a ending point in terms of that design. Uh, it's so, where did it evolve from? We don't know. 
uh, because that's such a refined form. Pulanoru a Bauddha smara ka vishesh ma gur nagiri valing pirichi nagarya thay daniya. Itna tiena ka vishesh gur nagiri lag veno satmar prasade. Abi dani ne adavi na kono ekka kumakshandha gur nagan ladde adde ekka mukhangat pravichik ladde kine ka apy adha avad dani ne. Ekke garbya kwa ke yathule ne atras gur nagiri lag. Nah, urut, anak kita punji wenu, kurun lagi lah. Hebei, kau tu dana ke cara nanti, mana mian, langki sampradaya kurun lagi lah, mian bidisi sampradaya kurun lagi lah. Bahira aku tu ya, anu aja kian. Ihe mana kurun lagi ni, mian orang tu nanti, mana, para na siami nanti, Thailand ti. Mian wakwaan wenu kita apa langkawat, kap petengin siamat, ani peteng burumat, atara sambande, loko kita kalak pisse. Pahit ini, orang yang kita sahaja tin sah, ane kau ada calling, kian anda pulau. Satmal Prasad is another enigmatic building due to lack of history. We all have the this visual similarities between Satmal Prasad and various building types in some countries in South and Southeast Asia. But those similarities are so strong and compelling. That even without uh, written history or archaeological evidence, uh, we can presume that there had been some connection between those temples in Cambodia, this temple type called uh, Prasad type. And in Cambodia, there are several examples that you can compare. One noteworthy building is. Uh, Koka Temple in Cambodia and Mahabol Chedi in Wat Kukut Temple in Thailand. They are very compelling, very similar, very compelling. And this may be due to the cultural relationships that we had, which I mentioned before, with those Buddhist countries where Buddhist monks come in, Buddhist monk students come in to Sri Lanka to Alahana Pirivina, to other monastic establishments, to study, to do research, and to serve as cultural ambassadors. Probably they may have instrumental in introducing this Cambodian or Thai or any other Southeast Asian building types to Sri Lanka. But remember, it is not only the building types they brought. Again, something that I repeated several times, together with the buildings, they also brought all the other rituals or other activities that were connected with these buildings. It is not only the architectural type. And those things that they brought here were assimilated and as a result of acculturation and what you call the naturalization, then making them Sri Lankan things, that became part of our own culture. Jajamahe sugandhinam bushibadanam Om maha Om namakshiva Om namakshiva Har har bole namakshiva Om namakshiva Om namakshiva Har har bole Namakshivam, Om Namakshivam, Om Namakshivam, Har Har Bole, Namakshivam, Om Namakshivam, Om Namakshivam, Har Har Bole, Namakshivam. Om Namak Shiva, Om Namak Shiva, Har Har Bole Namak Shiva. The presence of Hinduism was always, always and already there, not as much as in Purana. This is very important. We think the presence of Shiva is only happening in Purana. No, no, it was already there. Even during Anuradhapura time, there were other religions, like other folk religions. Uh, uh, where people made these small terracotta figurines and worship. So there was already more than, it was not only Buddhism. 
there were other especially shiva and this uh, folk religions were there Temples we had during the Chola period and in Jaffna in the early times were influenced by those Kerala temples. Reconstructions in Polandarua were completely timber-based structures, very much like the temples we had in Jaffna during the Dutch period, which is also very much like the temples in Kerala. It is not the temples you get in Tamil Nadu. Generally, in a koil, you get the main shrine, you get a drama hall, I mean, you get this in Ambake. Then you get side shrines. Uh, always, if it's a Devale, uh, there will be one Buddhist shrine, and then you get one or two side shrines, and the main shrine has a tired structure. Now in Ambake, it's again timber. Even today, just if you think that you were the king in that palace, in, in the citadel area, you come out. What you first find is on your left hand side is a Siva Devali. And then on an upper terrace, you have the quadrangle, the Dalda Maliga thing. You see, so you acknowledge, you give a very important uh, location to the Devali, Siva Devali, because you are coming out of the citadel. And you first see, the, even though it is at a lower uh, level, and then at the upper level you have the, this extremely interesting quadrangle. You have this uh, Saptamaha building and, you know, the circular Vatadage, and it's such an interesting, you know, piece of uh, constructed area. So my whole point is, it acknowledges the presence of the other religion, right then and there. It's not at some edge of the area, it's at the very beginning. When you are coming from the royal family, if you are, see my point, no? So, this is why I said, like, you know, the idea of reconciliation. And we can appropriate Polonarva for us to make sense of our predicament today. You know what I mean, like, you know, so, well, this is another way of reading history, but, you know, some may not agree with that. But, archaeologically, that is what you see.